It is fished every day and in nearly every ocean on the planet. An immense volume is captured and processed to keep up with the insatiable appetite of global demand. It is served in trendy restaurants around the world and in tin cans for school lunches. They are among the most valuable commodities in the ocean. It's tuna. Yellowfin, big eye, albacore and skipjack. 4.5 million tons of tuna are caught each year and nearly half of the global supply is caught in the Western and Central Pacific. It's a $5 billion a year industry and an economic lifeline for dozens of island nations. But for how much longer? People consider the ocean an endless bounty, but the ocean is far from unlimited. Tuna are part of the breadbasket of the world. If we lose that from the ecosystems, that's going to be a significant loss to everyone. The Pacific is so dependent on these fisheries resources that a collapse could be devastating. And it might be decades for them to recover from that, if at all. If we lose our tuna, we lose our entire way of life. The fisheries of the Western and Central Pacific cover 40 million square kilometers. It's a vast area populated by small island countries, which, according to international law, own all of the fish within 200 miles of their coastline. But most countries can't afford Navy ships or airplanes to patrol their waters, leaving their prized fishing grounds a target for ocean thieves. The Vessel Monitoring System, or VMS, is an essential tool in preventing illegal and unreported fishing within the exclusive economic zones of its member countries. Fishing is their one and only source of revenue and licensing of that fishing and keeping it strictly legal is what we're all about. We have a huge amount of responsibility to safeguard these fish stocks for the future. Each ship transmits a signal that is similar to an airplane transponder and that provides vital clues as to whether the boat is operating legally. Detecting an illegal fishing boat on a computer is one thing. Catching them in the act in the middle of the ocean requires air power. Australia and New Zealand have both sent their P-3 Orion aircraft in support of the effort to crack down on illegal fishing. The aircraft carries a crew of 13 and can stay in the air eight hours, allowing it to cover a tremendous area. More importantly, it has military-grade surveillance systems that can spot illegal activities long before a fishing vessel can spot them. We do three things. One, we will detect any illegal, unregistered or unregulated fishermen. But also, by being up here patrolling regularly, we've provided deterrence effect. So we will, in effect, stop the guys from the bad behaviours. We have the radar, we've got a very good electro-optics camera. And with a very big place, you need good surveillance assets to detect that um, kind of behaviour. No one stands to lose more if the tuna are gone than the people of the island countries. And it's why the United Nations Development Programme, along with the Global Environment Facility, made significant investments to improve the management of the fisheries. It was a milestone event for fisheries management, putting in place a very advanced fisheries regime in terms of compliance monitoring, in terms of ecosystem-based approach, based on sound science to set appropriate levels of fishing to sustain the resource. Our small investment in strengthening the management of the West Central Pacific fisheries is as much an investment in the environment of the West Pacific as it is in the people. Nowhere are people more protective of their fisheries than in the Western Central Pacific. It's a way of life. It defines their culture. It's how islanders make their living and feed their families. And without it, everything falls apart. This canary, it's really important to, to the people here, to the lives, to their families, and to the surrounding communities as well. We're worried if the tuna stock is gone, yeah, because the job here depends very much on the fish that we have in our waters. In the past 10 years, more boats with bigger capacity have been licensed to fish in the Western and Central Pacific. Catch rates have more than doubled. For now, it is still the most productive fishery on the planet, but the oceans are sending a clear signal. We've got this upward increase in the amount of biomass coming out, and at some point the system's got to give. But where that is is always the unknown, and that always is going to keep you up at night knowing that we haven't overstepped our responsibilities.
We'll know we got it right when we can say that the island nations are fishing sustainably, they're enforcing the laws they've committed to, they have put in place the monitoring compliance mechanisms and tools that they need to sustain the fishery going forward, enjoying the jobs, the incomes, the livelihood creation. That would be a true model of sustainability, not only environmental sustainability, but social and economic sustainability for the people. The oceans are talking to us. If we listen to them, they will continue to provide for generations to come. Thank you.